which dimension is time and which dimension is gravity? Let's spend the next few minutes thinking about these two questions. In early episodes we started out looking at the first dimension, then the second and so on, making assumptions about what comes after the third dimension. This time we'll take another approach, but before we do so, here's one thing to consider. Do you recognize that dimensions don't exist, but in concepts? For example, it's not possible for two dimensions to exist only, or anything living in two dimensions only, because we already know there are more dimensions and we are aware of them. So if there were beings living in less dimensions than we human beings do, they would only perceive to live in less dimensions, but they would actually live in the same space than we do. We all live in space, and no matter how many dimensions might exist, space has the capability of containing all dimensions there might be. So it is infinite and contains everything that is. This is why we can say that space is dimensionless, it is undimensional. It has no dimension. And since we human beings very much live in space, we too are truly undimensional. Only the restricted conception of what is can be categorized and described as dimension. So within space we create concepts of what we describe as dimensions. So the first, second, third. Every additional dimension multiplies all previous ones by infinity. And as a side notice, previous dimensions cannot be distinguished anymore. That means, looking from three dimensions, it is not possible to say which dimension was the third, and so on. Okay, so which dimension is time? Is time the fourth dimension? The answer at this point is no, but first we need to understand what time is. What we normally perceive as time is change. That what we remember as past, see in the present, and what we predict as future. What time really is, that is motion, which is the result of movement through all higher dimensions, and creation, the fact that motion manifests itself, and we come back to this later. If motion is a new thing for you, here comes an explanation. Let's try to imagine a two-dimensional perception of space, which is important to be understood for the next steps. Strange to believe, but we humans only see two-dimensional pictures all the time with our eyes. And then the human brain translates the picture into something three-dimensional. This translation requires the capability of using concepts. A concept, for example, is to say house without referring to a special house, but just the concept of a house. For us, every picture shows a house, but animals can't use concepts, which is why each picture shows something completely different to them. This means that animals perceive space in two dimensions. How does that work? Let me take this cube and rotate it. So for us, it's the same cube, just rotated. Did you recognize we just use concepts, which animals are not capable of? They don't know cubes. For them, it's a new form. If a cat walks around a cube, for the cat it's a new form with every step. The old form has nothing to do with the current form. For us, the old form is still there if we would go back. But for the cat, the old form vanished into the past. So walking around a cube, the different angles represent time for the cat. You recognize that animals live in three dimensions but perceive the world in two dimensions. Now there's yet another method of understanding the meaning of motion which is looking at a theoretical being living in two dimensions. So if we would take a three-dimensional cube like a, I mean just a room and imagine a two-dimensional being would live in this plane then every object in this plane this being would only see the intersections of it. And here's some movies that might explain it a little bit better. Now this is what the movie looks like in three dimensions, but the two-dimensional being would only see the intersection of it, and I hope this turns out good in the video. And here's yet another example. This looks like the line, there's a lot of colors going through, 
it looks like time but you see the reality everything was there already and you see that some of the colored dots come from above and others from below and they transition through the sphere of the two-dimensional plane which means that what the two-dimensional being thinks as time already exists as a whole in the higher dimension what we think of time is not real at all what we perceive as time is truly motion and motion is the movement of something that already exists as a whole in a higher dimension of space so here's some examples a 2d consciousness for example of cat would say every morning a new sun rises then a 3d consciousness of a human being would say of course it's the same sun that rises every morning but it's a new day that starts and in a 4d consciousness it would say all days in the life of a human being exist at the same time as a whole this answers our initial question of time because time is not only the fourth dimension it's a phenomenon of all higher dimension but this is only the basic answer this is how the answer is worded correctly there is no time at all there's no dimension of or for time time is an illusion created from our level of consciousness this illusion is created by motion and motion is not only the fourth dimension but a phenomenon of all higher dimensions okay now that we know that time is all higher dimensions which dimension is gravity this sounds like a strange question as we discussed before gravity is caused by space warp unfortunately it is impossible to imagine space warp except with models so in this model we see that the Sun warps space the most but there's also some space warp around the earth of course space warp is in all directions that means that space is warped down and up and around at the same time so space warp is an inwardness of space a warp into all directions a warp into itself since mass creates space warp or space warp creates mass either or the result is the same without space warp there would be no mass so important to know is without space warp space wouldn't have the capability of containing mass space warp and mass enables matter to stick together for example space warp keeps the sun together without space warp matter would be scattered throughout the whole universe without ever forming stars or planets this leads me to say that gravity is a spatial dimension as well higher than the three dimensions every spot of our three-dimensional world can be warped in infinite ways it can be warped not at all it can be warped a bit it can be warped a lot here's another example looking at a table with a stone and a feather the stone bends space more than a feather swapping the objects means that the space the objects occupy has now a different level of space warp so again the question now that we know that time is all higher dimensions which dimension is gravity and the answer is that it's of, of absolutely no interest which dimension is time and gravity and which one is first the only thing important is that both time and gravity are both higher dimensions than three dimensions to fully understand this remember that dimensions don't really exist there are no two dimensions and there are no three dimensions there's only space which is dimensional less and beings that perceive space only to a limited extent and even with looking at the concept of dimensions all higher dimensions multiply the previous one by infinity so it doesn't matter in which sequence to multiply with infinity at this point let me add a few things about imagining higher dimensional space for this we take an imaginary 4d plus hypercube in which past present and future exist at the same time and sketch into it a lifetime of a human being while in birth atoms come together in a newborn after death atoms will continue their existence whereas the human being himself only shared a small path together on this stream of life so imagining higher dimensions can be done by imagining a 4d string of atoms that are whirling and swirling around in bundles joining and dividing with infinite new streams all the time moving through our 3d conception of space but then this 4d string of atoms exists in all its possibilities 
in another higher dimension. Okay, we're slowly coming to an end here and summarize in higher dimensions that what appears to be time in any dimension exists as a whole in higher dimensions. This means that in space everything will exist in it always. Now if everything will exist in space always that means that there is no motion in space and if there is no motion in space how can there be motion in, in dimensions? And the answer to this is as we said earlier creation. The fact that motion manifests itself is due to creation. This manifestation, the act of change being observed, is created by consciousness. Within space, consciousness is creating dimensions.